Hello everyone. Welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack Mock 2. A single player. Thank you. Gameplay functions as follows. You are already familiar with the roles. Excellent. We will begin immediately. Almost sounds like she said already familiar with the roles. This category is Are you trying to sell me plastics, Mrs. Robinson? I got two thousand dollars, says you don't know this one. So, you ready for the plastic episode? I hope so. You should know your stuff. After all, plastic is the future, right? I'm making reference, of course, to that scene in The Graduate, you know, where that guy has just one word for Dustin Hoffman's character. Just one word? That's right. Plastics. Well, what would the one word be if the guy from The Graduate were talking about the first completely synthetic plastic? Polyester, Tupperware, latex, or Bakelite? Pretty sure it's polyester, isn't it? N O. O. Oh well. Okay, now here's a good answer. Invented in 1908, Bakelite was the first completely synthetic form of plastic, huh. and Dustin Hoffman's performance in The Graduate was the second completely synthetic form of plastic. Wasn't that bad. The category's gonna be Gilligan's Plastic Dream House, and this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. Which of the following Gilligan's Island characters is also the name of one of Barbie's friends? Marianne, Ginger, the Professor, or Mrs. Howell? I can never remember this one. No, Marianne's way too plain a name for a Aww. friend of Barbie's. Why didn't you pick this one? Ginger is one of the castaways and is the name of one of Barbie's dolly friends. Hey, come to think of it, so is Skipper. Hey, I wonder if Barbie's Skipper made that same dull noise whenever she got hit on the head with a coconut. I don't think she'd Gilgan the hell out, though. This one, it's like there's a rock band in my mouth. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Think fast, it's question time. Suppose you invite the Plastic Ono Band over for dinner. Considering the names of their albums, which entree will they probably like best? The latex solar beef brisket, the glass onion soup, the shaved fish curry, or the chicken flaming pie? I'm thinking shaved fish. John Lennon's Plastic Ono Band put out an album called Shaved Fish. Although I gotta say, I think it's okay for fish not to shave. Makes them look European. Also, shaving's a little hard on the scales. This one's called Definitely have to go with the grain plastic there. won't melt in the microwave. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Well, I'm sure the plastic Ono band enjoyed their dinner, but uh, looks like you've got half a tuna casserole left over. And would you know it, you're all out of saran wrap with which to cover it. Say you decide you decide to cover your tuna casserole with sarandon wrap. In which of these movies will you not find any sarandon that you might use to cover your casserole? Thelma and Louise, Dead Men Walking, A League of Their Own, or Bull Durham? I s you know, I know I've had these before, I just don't remember them. You have to throw away your leftover tuna casserole because Susan Sarandon was not in A League of Their Own. Besides, you shouldn't be such a penny marshal pincher anyway. Five. Coming at you. I mean no harm. You give me a right answer, I'll give you 3,000 bucks. Okay, time to use a little plastic sense and see if you can figure out this analogy. Amino acids are to proteins as model cars are to glue, pen caps are to bit, kids are to paste, or Legos are to little toy houses. Yeah, building blocks, etc., etc. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and Legos are the building blocks of things like, oh, gee, I don't know, little toy houses. Hey, by the way, old man, did you build this? This little airport here? Yes, I did. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Take that, huh? Yeah. Oh, no. Poor old man. Six. Oh, next, worthless junk of the rich and famous. You get this one right, you get 3,000 greenbacks. Hey, did you ever wish you had your own Lear jet? It's pretty cool. Not really. Anyway. If you or Learjet were equipped with another invention developed by the plane's namesake, William Powell Lear, what might you have on board? A collection of 8-track tapes, a frisbee, a box of prosthetic kneecaps, or an inflatable sheep? Yeah, I think that's 8-track tapes. William Powell Lear, the inventor of the Learjet, also held a patent for the 8-track tape cartridge. Because 
you know, jetting all over the world ain't going to be the same without some BTO cranking through a low-quality stereo. And no, it won't. Well, this should be good. This one's a dis or dat. This dis or dat category is called Xena, Hopperware Princess. I think I'll let it try okay, to play I'm out list here. Off seven names. For each one, I want you to tell me if it's a variety of plastic or a character from Xena Warrior Princess. As each one comes up, if it's plasticky, press the square button. If it's a Xena character, press the circle button and hit the triangle button to skip it. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I don't think I've ever used right to skip. But it's a thousand off your score for each one you miss or don't get to. All right, all right, I'm gonna start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. Okay, hold my hand, we're going. Teflon, plastic, Atalka, Joxer, Lucite, Elkid, Perspex, last one, Kalisto. In case you didn't notice, that's a perfect score. Here's some yes. cash for you. I remember enjoying right, Xena for, you know, more just, Jack. Let's get it, it was on. cheesy and schlocky, but it was fun to watch. At least for a while, then it got way too serious. Something I call, I'd crawl a mile just to sniff her trash. You get it right, you get 2K. Yep, sometimes you just gotta stop and smell the garbage. Looks like it's time for a celebrity trash question. Let's see, there's a receipt from a plastic surgeon, a book called 101 Ridiculous Faces to Amuse Your Friends, a pair of candy shoes, a copy of Playboy, and an MTV All Access Pass. Whose trash is this? Pamela Anderson, Carmen Electra, Cindy Crawford, or Jenny McCarthy? MTV was Jenny McCarthy, name. Jenny McCarthy is the former playmate and MTV employee with the rubber face and the plastic boobs. But in about 20 years, she'll be the ex-playmate with the plastic face and the rubber boobs. Nine. The category is... It Mr. might Potato hold up better, Head. you never know. A cultural history. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, picture this. It's 1952, and you're the first kid on your block to have the new Mr. Potato Head toy. Given what the original Mr. Potato Head was made of, what could you also do with it? Make a spiffy clay ashtray for your dad, turn it into a pincushion for your mom, fix yourself a tasty baked potato, or give your little brother a rock to play with. You know, the thing is, about this, the original toy didn't come with the potato. The it just came Mr. with the potato parts. head consisted of eyes, ears, and mouths with sharp little points to stick into a real potato. <laughs> yep, another fine example of American ingenuity. In the third world, it's only food, but here, it's entertainment. Ten. This category is why Boogie Nights was in Cinemascope. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. So did you see Boogie Nights, right? You know how Marky Mark's character has that 13-inch penis? Which is obviously a prosthetic. Anyway, mm -hmm. if the promos for Boogie Nights had referred to the Kinsey Report statistics on penile length, how could they have advertised the lead character? Dirk Diggler, twice the man you are. Dirk Diggler triples your pleasure. Dirk Diggler quadruples the action. Or Dirk Diggler, average size, big talent. Average. Uh-huh. According to the Kinsey report, the average penis is five to seven inches long, so Dirk's is about twice as big. Unfortunately, it looked like it had been glued on. I mean, you'd think the makeup people would have put a little more effort into blending and shading, you know? Not that I was paying any attention or anything. <laughs> Look alive. Apparently this neither were they. Could happen. All right, here's the deal. I'll show you an event like this one. Then I'm going to list off seven other events, like this one. For each one you see, you have to tell me if it happened before or after man first walked on the moon, or if it never happened at all. When the correct answer is lit, hit your buzzer and I'll give you a thousand smackers. But watch out, because every time you're wrong, I'll take away a thousand bucks. So, all right, let's hit it. This when did happen goes by, he ain't no bird or plane. All right, it's Superman. time to pay homage to someone who carries their plastic body parts a little better than Jenny McCarthy and Dirk Diggler. Here's your main point. Plastic Man hits the comic book scene. Now, all you have to do is tell me if this happened before Plastic Man was introduced to the world, after that, or did it never happen at all? Iron Lung developed. 
wooden teeth. Oh, that, that happened way before. Airheads candy. Goldfinger. Ah, that's... That had to happen after. Okay. Heart of Glass. Vortex. That was after. Really? Huh. I guess they never did it. Oh well. That would be after. I guess right, Vortex never made a liver. Well, not bad. Not exactly stellar. Let's see what that does for you. So, what do you say we get on with it? Well... The category is going to be, how about a shag on the floor? You're looking at $3,000 on this one. Okay, time for a poll. Who hates hardwood floors? Me, me, I do, I do. Considering what type of plastic is recycled to make synthetic carpeting, what could you throw on your floor in the hope that it would eventually transform into a nice rug? Rolls of film, soda bottles, credit cards, or food wrap? Pretty sure that's soda bottles. Same plastic they use in soda bottles is commonly recycled into stuff that's used in synthetic carpeting. Therefore, there is absolutely nothing wrong or gross about having a sticky floor. Nothing. I'm calling this one Dr. Disney. $1,000 at stake on this one. Open wide. I'd Based on his or her idiosyncrasy, there. which Disney character would most likely consult a plastic surgeon for an otoplasty procedure? Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Dumbo? Odo meaning ear, I think. Dumbo's got big ears, so he might consider otoplasty, which is plastic surgery for the ears. Well, what do you think, Doctor? Well, Dumbo, the procedure shouldn't run you more than a few grand, and it's really not that complicated. I'll be done erasing in about 30 seconds, and you can be on your way. Yeah, well, you know. This one's called Fee-Fi-Fo-Fum. Oh, wait, turn on QVC real quick. I got $2,000, says you don't know this one. Okay, suppose the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk seizes poor Jack and deposits him into a plastic bag. You know, to maintain his freshness. If the giant wants to seal the plastic bag containing Jack, which of these incredible infomercial products will deprive Jack of oxygen the fastest? Food saver, Euro sealer, button ear, or Floby? Was it the food saver or the Euro sealer? The incredible food saver creates a vacuum seal around whatever's inside the plastic bag, so Jack would asphyxiate real quick like. There we go. Now, if I could just find my Ronco rotisserie, I could make some jack jerky. I still say a flow bee would work. Welcome to the jack attack. When you see two words on the screen that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, I'll give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're going down 2,000. But don't forget, remember the clue. Not any old word's gonna do it. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Ooh. Rhymes with spork. Which reminds me, I'm kinda hungry. I'll be right back. Alien from Ork. Is Mork. Let's see if I remember these. I know I've run across them before. Nerd is a dork. Well, technically a dork is a dork, but no. The other white meat, pork. Duchess. Singer from Iceland. Bjork. 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 Yeah, baby, you are all over that attack. Let's see what you 
to give you score. That's the game. So wow, despite a pretty rough game, start, I think I did okay. You're the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left. Now look to your right. Now repeat after me. You don't know Jack. So, this has been the plastics episode of Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. All in all, <clears throat> eh, I'd seen it before and I still miss questions. Go me. And speaking of me, what's my new name? What's my new name? Please hurry or I will be forced to help you. What a shame, huh? Excellent. I will now get all up in your face. Lug nut. Lug nut. Okay. And with that, I will see you all next time for more. Hi, as always. I'm Steel Dakota, president of the National Gun Association. And Take I'm care, here folks. To tell you about yet another Later. reason why you need to protect your right to bear arms. Consider this all too familiar scenario. Come here, Fluffy. Yeah, nice kitty. You're a good kitty cat. Hey, wait, Fluffy. Where, where'd you get that AK-47? Huh? Hey, hey, don't be crazy. Hey, hey, put that down. Wait. <laughs> Whether it's a dangerous home invader or a heavily armed house cat, America, protect your rights and protect yourself. Mr. Johnson's magic powder will make you invisible. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. All right, look in the mirror. It uh doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but close your eyes now. <gasps> oh my god, it's a miracle. I can't see myself. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's magic powder. This stuff really works. Who is that? Where's that voice coming from? A little help here? Welcome to VH1's Behind the Song. This week, Black Sabbath. All right, Iron Man intro auditions, take one. All right, just go ahead whenever you're ready. <clears throat> I am Iron Man. Again, please? I am Iron Man. Okay, thanks. Next. Hi, I'm Iron Man. All right, thanks. Next. I am Iron Man. Next. I am Iron Man. Thank you. I'm Iron Man. Yeah, that's it, Iron Man. We'll call you. I am Iron Man. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Iron Man. Next. Hi, am I? Wait. Next. Hello. Ah! And so it went to the wee hours of the evening. Uh, that's it, man. We're out of people. I don't know. Maybe we should go instrumental on the beginning. I... Uh, excuse me. I'm from the cleaners. I've got your ironing, man. Wait a minute. Tune in next week for another episode of BH1 Behind the Song. I remember when Karen had just given birth to Emily. She was our third baby in four years, and I knew the responsibility was going to be immense. That's when I decided to visit National American Bank and Trust. I had problems, and they offered solutions. You see, my friend Larry works there as a janitor, and he loaned me 50 bucks so I could buy a one-way bus ticket to Daytona and get a fake driver's license. Suddenly, my responsibilities vanished, and I was able to go back to visiting strip clubs. Thanks, National American. Hi, I'm Patrick L. Bender, children's attorney at law. Do the other kids hate you? Do they pick you last in gym? Do they call you fatty, fatty, hamburger patty? Let's be honest, kids can be cruel. But thanks to new legal loopholes, you don't have to take it anymore. Just listen to one of my clients. Yeah, do you want to trade your bologna for my tuna? So I said are good. I'll help you stand up for your rights with teachers, too. Mrs. Green was always calling on me in class, and I took her to court, and she was crying, and now she doesn't come to school anymore. Call me, Patrick L. Bender, at 555-KIDS for a free estimate. That's 555-K-I-D-S. Remember, even though you can't spell litigious, you can still take the law into your own grubby little hands. Yeah.